at some point we're going to start this show i know we are really we are As we give a chance for everybody to join us. All righty. Let's get Lauren back in here. Lauren is from, whee, take that off my head, at uh, unique underscore behavior. Let's talk some more about our nervous system. There she is. Hi. There she is. Wow. Um, you endured one segment with me, and, you know, a lot of people go through a great deal in regards to their nervous system when they have to be with me that long. What was that? I said it's been very regulating. It's been good. Oh, it's well, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> That's a compliment. That was a compliment. Yeah. It wasn't deregulating, it was regulating. Okay. I have not done my job. It was supposed to be deregulating. I have obviously went the wrong direction because I'm so excited by uh learning this from you. Uh, uh I am learning from you. Okay. I'm sorry, what was that? I said it's all the practice that helps me to regulate. <laughs> oh, oh, so you have a pillow nearby that you can scream into? Is that what it is? You, you, did, yeah. you did some gargling while we were gone, and you sang and hummed a little bit. Okay. All right, so um, I know exactly how many things I want to talk to you about. Yes. But I know that even though there are 672 hours in a month, yeah. I can't get to all of them yeah. in this this time we have together. Yeah. They give a wave out to Robin as she comes in, others that are here. Um, so I'm going to try to be as balanced uh -huh. and as regulated as possible, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> so... You remember exactly what we were talking about before we uh, had to go to a commercial break so that I could upload the show. Yeah. So everyone can watch it while we're doing this one. Cool. So touch on what you were saying before we had to take the commercial break because I reloaded <laughs> on subjects <laughs> that I know I'm not going to be able to get to all of them, but I don't care. They're in my head. And I'm just going to go uh, like speed racer and super fast after you get done uh, explaining a few things when we were talking about before. Uh, people still need to have healthy boundaries. It's kind of where we were leaving it before. Uh, they can't just have an open door, open gate policy to their nervous system and leave it exposed to people who want to take advantage of them or try to hurt them or yeah. dereg deregulate them <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, or or, uh, or try to destroy them even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, again, it's just looking at what's in front of us and, and, and again, trying to remove judgment as much as possible because that's going to dysregulate us. So it's almost like fine-tuning it right down to the neurochemistry. So without any judgment, if there's somebody who is very dysregulated, who, who doesn't want to or doesn't choose to do anything to regulate, that person is going to be very threatening to our bodies. Okay, so the ninja is going to so, come out because it's going to pick that up, is what you're saying? Yeah. If somebody's coming towards us with weapons, we're going to have to ninja. Right, right mean, of course. Right, right. So, so we're looking at, it's basically, and then that's part of the reset. So the first kind of step is to look at what we want to do is, is regulate our nervous system so we can be the best 
version of ourselves, we can be our most authentic selves and we can um, exhibit connectedness with others. So basically have a positive ripple effect because our mindsets are contagious at the end of the day. So the more regulated and calm our mindsets are, will you know, beca okay. becomes a Okay, I'm going to jump in every now and then because there are guys watching and, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're operating on a, on a left brain pragmatic way and yeah. our right brain is trying to catch up to when you women are talking. So, so, so there's so much in there. There really, you have no idea what's running through my head, right? There's so much in there I want to dissect. Um, you're just going to have to come back another time after today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really mean that. I love this subject. I'm fascinated by it. Uh, okay, so... If a person finds themselves living off of the deregulated defensive lifestyle that they used as a way to survive because they've been dealing with an abuser, living with an abuser, label time, label time, narcissist, toxic person, whatever it may be, a bank robber. If, if they're living with that person, this is the main reason why I had you on the show because I wanted to be able to take what you have and fit it right in with the mm -hmm. discussion that many people have on this platform. If that's the case, and they've been living that way, this hypervigilance, whatever terms that are used in, in, the, in the spectrum of, of words today in therapy or mental health, they've been living with this person, and now they're hyper all the time, and they're defensive. Mm -hmm. They're, in essence, piggybacking, if I understand you correctly, again, correct me, mm -hmm. they're, they're deregulated to the point that they are not even their true self. But instead of labeling, pinning the tail on the donkey on the other person, we could flip that puppy and say, you know what? Let me figure out how I can start to regulate my nerves and my responses so that I'm not, I love the word, I'm not thwacking, am I saying it right? I'm not thwacking everybody because yeah. I'm still, I still got, the guy who did me wrong and walked out on me in my head and in my subconscious yeah. to the point yeah. that I'm slapping somebody that could be really good for me coming into mm -hmm. my life or the cashier mm -hmm. and I'm taking it out on that person and the guy yeah. that is washing my car and he must be a narcissist. Now we're just labeling and judging everybody. Yeah. Wait, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm just trying to make sure I understand you because you said, I told you there's yeah. a bunch of my head. My head gets going. My daughter's going to watch this and go like, that poor lady, she got stuck with dad. <laughs> that, so you said right now that judging or the judgment part does what again? Did you say that? I thought that's what you said. Okay, so everybody catch this, please. You said, please repeat that for the guys in the back row, <laughs> for the people in the back row. So any judgment dysregulates you further because if you judge, it's immediately me against you and then your body is primed for defense. That is so <laughs> juicy. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> See, I knew that I could not do a show at my desk or sitting down. I had to stand up to do this show because I knew you were going to say something that just freaked me out. You freaked me out, Lauren. <laughs> okay, you're telling me now we all have a tendency to go down this path of being the judge and jury on everyone else's life. Yeah. So the kind of way that I've so obviously, you know, I've I've a trauma background. So this is this is like I haven't even got to that. Now you're going yeah. there. Wait, that's what I told you. No, yeah. okay, I want to go down there, but go ahead and say what you're gonna say, but I want to see how you're gonna tie this together. Go ahead. Please. It's, about, it's basically about looking at, again, if we judge, we're putting more cortisol into our system. We're disabling up moving forward. So, but Correct. we also don't want to stand there and put our weapons down when somebody's coming with us, coming at us with a knife. So right. the way that I've, so this is again, part of the research. It's a lot more complicated and obviously individualized and tailored. That's why people. you're coming back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead, please. <laughs> Try to leave enough breadcrumbs for us to understand so we can eat a full meal eventually, even if it's yeah. multiple times you have to come back. But go ahead. Love it. So basically, it comes down to when you're ninja up. So you gave that example of, of somebody being uh, abusive out in the right. real world. 
regulated. The first protocol, so if you look at our nervous systems are shaped according to our life experiences. If you want your nervous system to shape out of that defensive ninja mode all the time, you have to remove yourself from the environment that is causing your body to develop these self-protective behaviors. Time out. So, Time out. You got to repeat that. Okay, so the, no, ther- listen, 85% of the people that, that send me messages that DM me are guys, and they often tell me, I love your guest, but sometimes you have to jump in and break it down so we can get it. So everybody, I am a nerd and a, and a weirdo and goofy. I'm a guy. Those things happen. They three go together. But I have to do this sometimes and interrupt you there because I am breaking it down because a part of my audience wants it broken down more because they they download and watch it over and over. So please, even though the majority of you may get this, just bear with this on this subject because it's something very important to the audience that loyally watches these shows. Lauren, what you're saying then is, please repeat that last part. Now, I may have thrown a loop for you because I said all that. Please repeat that last part again. So if your body is being shaped, so if your nervous system is being shaped to adopt defensive self-protective behaviors from the environment, right. in, you've got to remove the perceived threat from the environment so that your body gets a chance to get its breath back and not have to adopt those self-protective behaviors. So you've what, got to put the-, the threat has to, okay. What if the threat goes to bed with you every night? You're mm-hmm. saying that a person needs to then make sure that they have space time and continuum in the galaxy away from the threat so that they can begin to reframe i'm just saying it just correct me now they need to be able to reframe if not they're being reframed or constantly deregulated by the and we're going to say real world like you said a moment the narcissist or the toxic person they're totally taking over that person's nervous system which means they can't be an authentic person anymore because our nervous system makes us authentic. It makes us calm. It makes us, we, re, we don't overreact. We don't find ourselves, as it were, overcrying because someone is constantly abusing us. But we will have natural responses instead of irregular and unnatural, unbalanced responses. Yeah. The threat has, to, yeah. in other words, that person is not just treating us bad. Or we may be treating somebody bad for all we know, but we're attacking someone else's nervous system if we can't regulate our tongue, our words. Yeah, well, we are. And then it our becomes actions. a cyclical effect. A cyclical, yeah. a cyclical behavior. Yeah. And so it's not necessarily physical distance. It's right. emotional. So, and that's, and that's You're where... doing it to me. Now you're directing the show. I was going to get to that. Oh, man, you're good. You're good, man. You are so good. I was going like, okay, I know where I'm going. And you jumped ahead three times since we just came back. You just did it. And I went like, okay, I guess we're talking about it now. Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. Because this is very important as far as I'm concerned for my platform. Go ahead, please. So it's basically, again, we're not looking to cast blame. We're not looking to, to say, Judge, oh, you're label. Judgment. Yeah, get rid Marcus of it. Good, right. And set that aside momentarily. Yeah. So what or, we're doing. Forever. Is- if you're living, so for example, if you're living with that person that's dysregulating you with their defensive based behavior, yeah. what we're doing is we're looking at what I call the relational circle. So you're doing a bit of an energy audit in terms of your Wait, emotion. Is that on your page? I missed it. No, I haven't put that on my page. I'm going to go like, come on now. I do research. Don't do it. Now you're messing with me. Now you're messing with me on my whole platform. <laughs> what did you just say? What did you just say? What is, what is it called? circles so in terms of kind of putting so if we're if we're prone yeah. to abusive behaviors or defensive based behaviors if we're prone to that we have probably got an issue with boundaries okay so when, when you say prone when you say prone to that you're talking about if we are accustomed to being in that atmosphere or in turn having that lifestyle of abusiveness into our inner circle or or, or we're used to being in relationships like that we get accustomed to it, then there's something wrong with our boundaries. Well, often, because if oh. you look at an isolated example, if you've, if you've experienced abuse most of your life, and a lot of that, so we've, ad- so we've adapted self-protective behaviors. One of them is the form response, so the people-pleasing response, so aligning yep. with the threat so, yep. so that you don't get yep. hurt. And, and if, if that is the case, 
you will have an issue with boundaries. So you will have an issue being able to put a boundary in between somebody hurting you and yourself. So, so, so my point is to go the route to say, oh, just put in boundaries, it's not going to work. You have to look at an audit. So again, we're bringing it all back to basics and what's in front of us. So if we're living with somebody who's prone to behaving in an abusive or threatening way to us, we look at our energy audit and we look at our intimacy circle. So those are the people closest to us. And we develop through a practice, we develop a tailor-made code of conduct. So for example- And it's, a, it's, survi it's survival based. In other words, it's not necessarily a regulated behavioral process. It's more of a reactionary knee-jerk reaction mm. behavioral process for survival in that atmosphere. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So basically, if I understand you. Yeah, we want, we need to kind of, so again, it's taking the power back. It's taking the responsibility yes. Yes. on us. Right. We can't control their behavior, but we can now. So, right. so to minimize our bodies feeling threatened and dysregulated. And how we do that is we look at our code of conduct. So in my intimacy circle, what is my code of conduct? In my intimacy circle, if somebody hurts me and I say I'm hurt, I expect my code of conduct is for that person to be able to say sorry and explain what they're going to do differently next time. That's my code of conduct for my intimacy circle. And that becomes that becomes a, a part of a person's standard in their intimacy circle. Exactly. So therefore, if somebody, so if that said person can adhere to my code of conduct, can say sorry and explain what they're going to do differently, so help me feel safe in that intimacy yes. circle. Yes. Right. Then they say, brilliant, then you belong right. in the intimacy because the circle's intact, the circle's intact, they're exactly. able to stay within the circle because they're working within the framework of your framing of your nervous system that everything is, that we're good. So exactly. we're gone beyond just the label of the word peace and everybody's joyful. We're literally just focusing on the nervous system having a beautiful place to exist in because we have an intimacy circle that we've set up standards of codes of conduct. Is exactly. it, now remember, I'm not, got everybody please, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm looking to her to correct me. Don't think, yes, oh, he happening? understands. No, I'm just trying to understand more because you're blowing my mind. You're totally blowing my mind. Okay, go ahead. All right, go ahead. Keep going. I'm, I'm, so, I'm with you so far. So then it comes down to, then it's not kumbaya, oh, let's all be, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. Affirmation party, <laughs> right. We're, we're drinking affirmation juice. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's good. Exactly. Go. No. We're like, oh, wait, that person's not acting right. Let's give yeah. them another chance. Oh, yeah, drink some juice. And they go like, no, nah, they don't. Okay, go. All right, I got you. Go ahead. Right. Not kumbaya party. Okay. Yeah, but it's also not saying, oh, it's your fault that I'm Yeah, nervous. right, right, right. Empowered by blaming. Yeah, What yeah. we're doing, we're looking, right, that's my intimacy circle. If you can adhere to my code of conduct in the circle, brilliant. If it's too difficult for you, if you struggle with that, then perhaps you, you belong in my friendship circle. And my friendship circle has this code of conduct. If you struggle with that, then my acquaintance circle. And then you're further and further away from me, depending on what you can cope with regarding I, my code of conduct. I am going to have you back on another time. And I am going to have dry erase boards all behind me, three of them. I'm going to have a friendship circle, an intimacy circle right behind me, and an acquaintance circle over here, and we're going to break this down. And then the, no, you have to hear me out now here, which you've been doing since, since the, the onset of uh, the first segment and now this. Listen, I have people that write me, and they specifically outline the fact they come from divorced families and parents. They come from, they come from the foster system. Uh, they were homeless, and, and and now they're trying to regroup their life. I get all kinds of people connect with me and tell me what they want to see. They going to love this program because many have not been taught about different circles of of of, of socialism of, of of being social with others, or, or in other words, relationship uh, circles as we're talking about. They don't, under, they don't understand how that all works. They just have been reactive, defensive. You're, you're shedding light on something that we can actually use our ability to be free moral agents to choose to regulate our nerves and not leave them in the hands of a knucklehead or a troublemaker to thwack us with. I'm sorry, I'm just taking all your turns. I'm just, hey, I'm sorry. It's ghetto, it's, ghetto, it's ghetto therapy right now. So I'm just, I'm just, it's ghetto mental health right now. You just got stuck with it. 
<laughs> tomorrow it'll be somebody else. <laughs> Yesterday, I'm just saying. You're, I know you're sitting there going like, "How did I say yes to this?" <laughs> what? So, so right now, if someone did not receive the bubble of beauty and relationship and family circle that mm -hmm. they could talk live the way you're talking about, the framing was bad. The balance was bad. The mismanagement, mismanagement of their nervous system and who they are as a human being was just faltered to beyond what it is normally because we're all imperfect. Yeah, absolutely. They just had some bad parents or bad siblings. Yeah. And now they're carrying what they learned in a defensive you know, survival mode yeah. into the next relationship or job and wonder why they keep getting fired or getting divorced <laughs> all the time. You're saying that we can... We can't fix imperfection, but that's 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 up to the one that made gravity and the galaxy. But mm -hmm. we can we can reframe ourselves. Well, like you said, when when your kid you know went in the nappy in the first segment, you said that you took a pillow and screamed. <laughs> they, they thought it was funny. Yeah. So yeah. it may look kind of weird when somebody's regulating themselves, but they're going to need to do that, right? Exactly. No yeah. matter what our background is we have the opportunity by choice to protect our nervous system from people who are abusers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We don't, ha we don't have to leave the door open is what you're saying. No, we shouldn't. Because again, if you, like, and again, if you get right down to the nitty gritty, everyone has adopted self-protective self behaviors. I mean, it's Bingo. obviously- Oh, I uh, love that. Yeah. No. Yeah, and it's, it's not about, it's not, it's, again, it's, we're constantly um, parking judgment at the door because at the end of the day, if if somebody, and again, I've been in, in abusive relationships in the past, they brought up the worst than me, and I'm, I'm a nightmare. Mm -hmm. with, yeah. You know, and, yeah. Like, no hey, we all we all are. <laughs> we all are. We start going like, was that me? <laughs> Did I really do that? But yeah. again, but, but we're all capable, and I think part of the work is facing our shadow selves and, and saying, yeah. right, yes. That, and so I yeah. have now I know that I'm going to do better so so now that I know what I can be like when I'm dysregulated it's my duty to the world to actually try and balance that back up so part of that comes with those people who have been in your life who you've had toxic relationships with um and and uh oh I lost you for a minute I lost you for a second you still there yeah. I lost you for a second go ahead yeah very much my battery went. Um, everyone has a responsibility in the situation where you have a kind of duty to protect your nervous system so that you're not dysregulated and reactive, which becomes a trigger effect. Um, so, so that's where it's it's the most Pema Chodron says it's the most compassionate thing you can do to set boundaries. Um, because because it's it's compassion based upon. Okay, this is going to sound really bad. I'm trying to think of another term real quick, and I can't. It's based upon a me first protecting my 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 nervous system. Yeah, uh, yeah. Concept is ba is essentially based on the compassion for oneself to not leave the draw bridge down for the armies of negativity to come in. Yeah, it's, it's literally. Go ahead, please, please. It's compassion for. It's compassion for yourself, but it's compassion for the other person as well. Yeah. Because yeah. the other person on a level doesn't want to hurt you either. So so it's about looking at what is the most compassionate thing for both parties in the situation. And, and the most compassionate thing in terms of co-regulation, if I'm dysregulated, you're dysregulated and vice versa, yeah. is to take responsibility for your own dysregulation in that situation. And, and, and we're talking about co-regulation. Yeah. Absolutely. We're not talking about someone who you want to co-regulate with and they're into deregulating you so they yeah. can have the up, upper hand. Exactly. That's not what we're talking about. No, so everybody, yeah. no, so before everybody starts writing me and I can see my DMs and, and then people start writing me during the show and going like, what is she talking about? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about two healthy individuals who are having an unhealthy moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're talking yeah. about two healthy individuals having an unhealthy moment because of the imperfection we all carry with us. Mm, mm, mm. We're not talking about somebody who is out to end your life, to, to, to beat you, uh, to financially abuse you, 
or take advantage of you. That is not what we're saying that you need to leave yourself open for that. I need to clarify that because yeah, yeah. people will misunderstand Lauren. And Lauren is an exceptional, beautiful person who's telling us, look, if we leave judgment at the door, set labels aside, we have a better vision not only of ourselves, mm -hmm. but we have a better vision of who we're dealing with if we're dealing with someone who wants to co-mingle and live their lives with us forever. It's or be, it here to the code of yeah, conduct. Yeah, and connect. Yeah, yeah, but they have to, I oh, mean, I'd love it. Okay, your code of conduct and adhere to it, that's a whole nother show. I'm telling you, if we get into this, everything that I research, I'm going to have to throw away. And it's not, it's, it, what you said is much juicier than what I want to bring up, but I got to save the juicy stuff for later. So, so but, but I do want to touch on uh, it a little bit more, please, before we, I'm going to navigate back to your page. You, you started something here, man. You started something here. You, you have no idea what you started. And you may never agree to join me again, but I'm telling you, I will be begging. I will be begging you till I'm 90 years old, and that's 30 years away from now. So, so I'm telling you, you have sparked something here because this fascinates me. Because my platforms deal the the these uh, public service platforms, not the shoes, you guys. I don't wear platform shoes. The, these these subject this subject, uh, it fits in with uh, the shows that I do because so many people have labeled themselves, excuse me, <clears throat> labeled themselves on a permanent basis as either a victim or a survivor mm -hmm. where those are recognizable things that we can do and still move about in certain circles and talk about. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is, is that our nervous system has been under attack by people who were not trying to work with us. Exactly, exactly. Yes, we can label them as a given spectrum of behavior. Yeah, yeah. But we do not have to, and there's a number of people I agree with this on, and I'm just going to say this now because of certain people that may be listening, uh, Kim Saeed, Tracy Malone, and a number of other people. Uh, there's tons of others. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Shaw, there's others that talk about toxic uh, relationships and behaviors and a number of other things and, and narcissism. Uh, Christopher from YouTube. Uh, many, many have uh, either been on my show or people that uh, uh, I watch their their work. They're talking almost around the same aspect you're speaking, except you're being clinical about it to the point that it opens up <laughs> a beautiful butterfly box of of possibilities mm -hmm. that we can control about our own lives. We don't have to stay labeled as a victim or a survivor of something. It was a moment in time where we were trying to co-mingle and coexist with someone forever, and they weren't ready for us. Exactly. They exactly. could not handle us. Yeah. They weren't equipped to move and build with us. Exactly. They were more dismantlers while we were builders. Yes, exactly. That's such our a nervous point. system. Our nervous system was ready to get. Let's go build something together, yeah. and not just build yeah. it, but we're gonna keep it, and we're gonna keep exactly. it moving forward. And the next thing we know, we're sitting on it. Well, hold on a second. What? When you, when you took your tool belt off, where you yeah. going? Totally. And they're going like, no, 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 no. I'm deregulating this. And if you want, and if you want to be with me, you got to deregulate too, because I don't want to build unless you're gonna build that tower to me and you worship me. It, I don't want to build with you because now it's yeah. a team project. We constantly can look for connections. That's what you said. First segment, yeah, and I yeah, loved it. Yeah. We are looking for connections so we can build together and have uh -huh. sustainability and stability. And my goodness, our nervous system is regulating who fits and who doesn't. Exactly. You're yeah. a genius, Lauren. I just figured out we're whole page. You blew my mind. Oh, my goodness. You have just blown my mind. That's why I'm sorry. Everybody that normally watches me, I don't get this way. You have just blew my mind. I do this like on my own. In my, yeah. Nobody gets to see this. And I literally for the first time showed this on my shows. You just blew my mind about our nervous system. Yeah. By the way, just so you want just so everybody understands, uh, she is the guest today. She's not she's this is not a it's not a therapy session. I just want you guys to know that. It may feel like it for her, but uh Lauren. It's Lauren Bond. She is a somatic coach. I'm reading from her bio right now. Activating reset and rebalancing nervous systems. She is a certified neuro coach. Uh, polyvagal trained somatic practitioner. A parent coach. 
She's also known as the pillow screaming mother. Um, <laughs> she is also, you got to watch the first segment to get that. You got to watch the first segment to get what I just said. She is also the pillow screaming mother, which would be a great t-shirt to sell as a parent coach. It should be a, it should be a training program, a seven day pillow training screaming program for, for, for dirty nappies, for dirty nappies in the UK. All right, it's, she's a trauma. I don't know what has happened to my show. I was really serious when I was going to do this today. Oh man, I I didn't man. I shaved my legs and my feet and my feet. And so anyhow, trauma. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I have no idea. So trauma informed trainer. You are a trauma informed trainer. Now I now that I'm really concerned about. You are a trauma informed trainer. Does that mean you train people to be trauma informed, or do you? Train. I'm just saying, so I, I study words. Yeah. It's, it's, what does it mean that you, do you train people to go, do you get, do you bring trauma? Is that what you do? <laughs> Who are you, woman? <laughs> Lord, no, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, go ahead. My brain has been blown. You blew my mind from oh, the first brain. segment, but go ahead. I, I'll be okay sometime about five o'clock today. I'll be fine. Go ahead. So trauma-informed trainer. Yeah. So oh, no, we got the circles happening because we're having buffering issues here. So everybody, hold on for a second. We get her back here. We got you back. You buffered for a moment. Yeah. Either that or yeah. you got a phone. Either that or yeah. you got a phone call or something. Or some, okay. That's probably that's, your prime minister is calling you, telling you to stop talking to the people in the States now. So, oh, <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So are you okay there? We're all good. Yeah. We're all connected. All right. Trauma. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I'm moving. Can you see me? I'm not frozen yeah, or nothing. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, so trauma informed. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> a lot of, and a lot, that particularly applies to school because there are a lot of children in school that have increasingly reactive behavior, and the approaches in a lot of schools are very mainstream. So it's the top down approach. So I come in with a trauma informed, so inform staff and practitioners and parents about the impact of trauma um, and train. In the bottom-up approach so to meet the needs of neurodiversity in school so so okay. just training with trauma in mind so saying right a, a, a neurotypical child will okay. and or neurotypical individual will present as this a neurodiverse or a trauma um survivor will present as this so trauma-informed training you are just man you are unbelievable oh. man you must be interesting to live with you just, you're just like dissecting. Don't ask my you, I uh, know, I really do. You have no idea. I want to have them and ask them so bad because, okay, so from the bottom, from the bottom up, not from the top down. That's not your approach. Your approach is from the bottom up. That in itself, along with the relationship aspects that we've been talking about, the relationship circles, those are all avenues that I want to, I want to go down with you on future shows. So at the beginning June first, everybody uh, is is going to come out. Uh, I wasn't going to mention it right now, but I will. Uh, I'm going to be doing a summer series with a number of different people uh, to come on to expand our, our understandings and perspectives on uh, human behavior and how we interact with one another, uh, along with other things. Uh, so I hope that you will be able to join as a part of the platform. Uh, it's uh, it covers, of course, the summer is three months. So that's. That's you coming on at least three times uh, to discuss a number of things that you have just blown my mind with. And I thought I had the mega mind. That's one of my favorite cartoons. And I just like, you just totally, hello, you just blew my mind. So, uh, so, so there's so much I want to go into now. And I haven't even touched her page. I haven't even touched her page, which is mind blowing in itself. Uh, so the way we perceive our nervous system and its ability to be reset, rebalance, or even manually through the, as you mentioned, vagal system. Or mm -hmm. break, vagal, uh, vagal break, yeah. Vagal break, uh, be able to manually uh, reset given behaviors or reactive behaviors we may have. If, again, jump in every time I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. no, no, you're right. so, so if that's the case, this is something that, that goes outside of just our coexisting, co-mingling for the purpose of having a mate forever. We're talking addictive behavior, mm -hmm. sobriety. We're talking a number of issues that this can come into play then. Is that mm -hmm. correct or not yeah. correct? Yeah, I mean, and, and again, I don't want to simplify or minimize anyone's experience, 
but it is a process and there is a way and and i speak from experience there is a way to rebalance your nervous system so that you can have peace of mind and actually be able to like you say have your ninja because your ninja is awesome but but your ninja becomes more of a monk mindset so it knows who to thwack and who not to thwack basically got it, got it. Um, you, so you're do, not just thwacking you, random do, do you mean I, I can tell right now you're going to be stuck staying at the rest of the night you're going to be you're going to be in bed wake up and go like thwack <laughs> your partner's going to go like what did you just thwack me for I heard the show. I know what you're doing. So, so, so we were talking about getting into this monk mode. Or you, you don't mean the TV show, by the way. You may have never seen it, but there's a show called Monk here in the states. But so you love monk. monk. Okay. So yeah. we not that kind of monk where we are constantly overregulated, as it were, yeah, exactly. uh, in our nervous system. We're talking about having a mindset that we're not just throwing labels and words out to make our brain believe it. We literally have regulated our mind and our nervous system and are aware when it's being deregulated from the outside or if we're mm. doing it to ourselves. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, that's it. And again, we have, I think a lot of the time when you've had a trauma background, there's been an imbalance of power. And a lot of the time, a lot of your self-protective behaviors have been adopted to, to deal with that balance of power. So to protect your body against that imbalance of power. So this is a way of reclaiming your power back and, and, and putting everything back into balance. So, so would it be safe to say, or, uh, correct me please, mm. trauma is essentially an imbalance of power? It's trauma, or no. is a, trauma is the body's response to a perceived threat and it can result in emotional overwhelm. And that's often when stress and trauma is banked, when the body is experiencing emotional overwhelm and that's why i say it's perceived threat because what threat might look like to one person it wouldn't yes, to right, another correct yeah. right absolutely yeah. so, so, but so if we're looking oh, at childhood sorry to interrupt you if we're no, looking no, no. at childhood adverse experiences is more my point um so when there's been like abuse at home or, or partners you know where there's an imbalance of power a lot of the time the fawn response for example which is another self-protective behavior that's been adopted due to the imbalance of power so so often we give up our power and and this is a way to take it back so we we eliminate judgment we reframe look at what the body's doing and learn how to navigate our own nervous system basically because if we're not navigating our own nervous system then we become as it were the guinea pigs and we can live in guinea pig hood exactly. we can live in yeah. guinea pig exactly. hood and it's yeah. like yeah these things and now we got one constant american idol sob story yeah. or the voice sob story it's like every can't they just go and sing it's like we have to lead it with every bad thing that's ever happened to you which is kind of like vote for me please yeah, so yeah. everyone is indeed different in the way we perceive yeah. trauma experience trauma react to trauma but that power balance doesn't have to stay exactly. where every time we go to eat we're yeah. bringing up that trauma and now everybody's running away from us and then we're turning around and going like i need to just find my own tribe so they can hear me and agree with me no you need yeah. to maybe make make some other steps that can help open up this huge yeah. door of opportunity of happiness by yeah. dealing with and re-regulating or the words you use in your bio is rebalancing yeah rebalancing and that's the thing it's not there's no right i mean again I'll, I'll no there is the no minimizing of, of a person's situation or no, right or wrong or we're no just right yeah. we're throwing whatever somebody's going through out of the yeah. out the car window as we just keep driving yeah no, no. but it's there are incremental possible. steps that can be yeah. made by maybe somebody contacting you working yeah. along with you so that you can coach them to see that the picture is bigger than maybe we are looking at it. Well, that's it. I think it's just about, it's understanding the neurochemistry and it's understanding why your body is doing what it's doing. And that's the, that's the freedom because at the end of the day, like I say to everyone I, I work with, there's no right or wrong, but they're very definite actions and consequences in, in terms of neurochemistry. So if we focus on a problem and if we focus on everything we've been through, if we focus on being a victim, it's going to, we're going to be re-traumatizing ourselves because we're reliving, we're re-patterning, we're re-experiencing that trauma and it's going to be flooding our body with cortisol and stress, which is going to keep us locked in that dysregulated state, which is going to either, 
lead to ninja, which is like fighting, swacking innocent people, or another response is a snowman where we'll freeze and be overwhelmed yep. and disassociate. So, so there's one of those two. Those will be our responses. We can choose to live like that, and if if it's too yes, uncomfortable course, not to, yes. it's everyone's right. choice. But if you if you want to be able to break the cycle and 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 reset and rebalance, it's really about looking at those those moments and thinking right what's happening with my neurochemistry here if, if i am focusing on what's going wrong if i'm focusing on a problem i'm flooding my body with cortisol which is disabling me from moving forward if i reshift and i think okay this happened we're not minimizing or invalidating what happened something no, definitely by happens. all means no i am right. hurt somebody right. hurt me some i am hurt what's the goal here the goal is to balance the power dynamic back up to reclaim power to rebalance my nervous system so how i'm going to do that is through this and this and this technique you know so and, can, and yeah no please please go ahead You're and again it. it's about looking at it's about embedding those habits like we spoke of earlier embedding habits small achievable habits and we and we start yes. off with those like i think lady gaga had a great term saying bite-sized steps of bravery so little pieces because we don't want to overwhelm our body we need to respect our ninja so it's about embedding small um, goals, which releases dopamine into the system, which regulates our mood, which helps us to stabilize. And then it's about looking at doing things with loved ones or looking at our intimacy circle. Who can we spend time with that makes us feel safe? And that's releasing oxytocin. So we're flooding our bodies with all the right neurochemistry and all the most helpful neurochemistry to be able to regulate, to be able to access calm, to be able to see things clearly. And therefore, whatever that negative thing, situation, action was, whatever that thing we're anxious about, paying a bill, paying the rent, whatever it may be, it doesn't dominate, but it becomes the thing that the ninja will go slay exactly. instead of slaying the people or the, those who are trying to support you exactly. or biting, biting the hand of the one who's trying to feed you yeah. goodness. Instead, that person, we, me. I can go look at it and go like, okay, I don't want to get out of bed. This really sucks. This happened. That happened. Yeah. Bummer. This is like yeah. seriously bummer, you know, from COVID to whatever it may be. Yeah. A relationship, but small incremental goals. And you know what? Yeah. Lauren, you're so hip. You scream in the pillows. You know, Lady Gaga, you are like so hip. <laughs> you in the UK are so cool. All right. So anyhow, back to what I was saying. So essentially... I can do incremental goals and get my hit. I can get a chemical hit that will mm -hmm. keep me moving to slay whatever it is that I'm anxious about Absolutely. or having a panic attack about, yeah. panic attack about. Yeah. But what, what works for me in my bed doesn't work for you in your bed or someone yeah. else, yeah. but the neuroscience is correct. Just yeah. like nobody can deny gravity, nobody can remake oxygen the way it's originally made. Yeah, that exactly. we there are certain things that just work the way they work because that's the way they were created to work. We exactly. can't we can't fix it. We can't yeah. change it, and it's not broken technically. <laughs> it's exactly. technically not. It's, it's technically not, not yeah. broken. You no, know, yeah. our relationship could be broken. The person we're talking to could have some type of mental and emotional breakdown and be broken. Just yeah. because exactly. we let them in our life doesn't mean that we're broken. Exactly. Yeah, but that's exactly it. You blew my mind, girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can keep doing this for at least another four or five days, but that's not fair to your partner or your children because you got nap you got nappies to take care of. So, so you, you got dirty nappies that you got to change. So, so, so my days are gone. That's your problem. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So anyhow, uh, what I was going to mention to you is I was not going to keep you all night because it's nighttime where you are. What time is it over there, by the way? It's like 10 past nine here. Yeah. I don't want you people here in the States complaining about this woman ever. She's staying up well past well past her time to be with her children and her family to drop some knowledge on you people. You better apply it. Do you have a book or anything out or do you have a movie coming out, a, a movie of the week or anything? Do you have I, am anything? Actually work, I am actually working on an online course, so that, that'll be up on my website soon. Okay. So, so yeah. uh, I, I would take your course, but I couldn't take what you just did to me right now in less than two hours. <laughs> my head's about to... I've got a, I got so much. I, I have to retrain my children now, and they're in their, they're like in their thirties. <laughs> like I've just, I've just trained them all wrong. I just, I got, 
I thought I was a good father. You know, I, I cussed the oven and everything. I thought I was doing pretty good. You just, no, I'm just, uh, you, hey, hey, you, I got to go deregulate you so I can have better regulation for myself. Maybe that should be the term that everybody starts using when they're dealing with difficult people. They go like, you know what? I need to deregulate you. Instead of yeah, no contact, sure. instead of going no contact, we just say, I'm just going to have to deregulate you. They're going to go like, what do you, what do you mean by that? No, I learned it from Lauren. Unique, yeah. unique <laughs> underscore behavior. <laughs> They're gonna blame you. You're gonna have all these lawsuits. <laughs> all these lawsuits. Everybody's being deregulated. Uh, no, no more council culture. Just deregulate people. All right. So um, that's me being goof, goofy uh, because that's what people come for. You to educate them and for me to entertain them. Uh, okay. Thank you. We did really well together. There's only one major problem with everything for this show right now. It didn't. I didn't do anything that I had planned to do. <laughs> <laughs> at all at all i'm sorry so i don't know if the lighting's bad the audio may be bad for this show or whatever i really don't care if it was just you and i that did this and nobody else watched it i am down for that because this yeah. was so good you have no idea if you knew how much of a nerd i was you would know how how high i am right now from this show <laughs> this was so good you have totally peaked my brain all right i'm gonna look over here at the screen grab my mic here and pull it over here and I'm going to look at the, oh, look at the big screen down here. Let me move this around here. All right, everybody, uh, Tree of Stars on tour. By the way, she's going to be on the show soon. Uh, she says, I agree, everyone is different. Uh, there's so many people here that have joined in and been kind to give comments. Um, but I'm going to turn to this one here that's on the screen. Hopefully you can see that there too as well, Lauren. Uh, Sophie Haver uh, puts down, there's such, a brilliant, such brilliant advice. Knowledge about the bio biology is power. Thank you, Lauren. And you got you got you got some of those here. Look, I give you some right now here. Uh, Lauren, you have evidently touched more lives than just mine today. But huge problem as I started to talk about. Uh, a lot of my viewers of the show, they come from what's called the IGTV community. Then I have my loyal followers uh, of uh, the show that actually follow my page. I appreciate both of them. But they both turn on me if I have a guest on and I do not play a game. <laughs> I, mean, I, can, I have literally, I can make one up, but I am telling you right now, I don't even want to play it. I want to just keep talking about neuroscience and biology in the brain. I really do. Uh, but I know that a lot of people will start to hunt me down and talk bad about me. And I will have to dysregulate too many of them because <laughs> my nervous system can handle all that. And that's another thing I was going to ask you. Our nervous system can only handle so much within given circumstances and situations on a continuous basis. Yes? No? Yeah. And again, it's, it's and, and like I say, tonight it's been the, the most basic way of putting it. But it is about knowing the whole point is about when you are feeling anxious to flip the focus from your mind to your body to really get to know what's happening in your body and what your body needs so like you say if you if you are having days where you can't get out of bed what we're looking for is balance so if you are dissociated numb completely exhausted you're probably right. hypo aroused so you're 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 snowman you're frozen you need to kind of balance it up a bit more so when you're immobilized with fear you have to mobilize in safety so so if you're lying in your bed and you're completely frozen and you can't move a nice technique to use to mobilize is just doing this with your hand so so you're mobilizing gently and bite-sized steps just to kind of balance your body and bring your focus back to your hands so rather than the kind of kindling of the mind, the kindling of cortisol where you can add thoughts right. as to why and it just makes it yeah. worse it's about bringing the focus back to your body and doing something lightly mobilizing just like your hand or rocking just and it's Rock. about achieving balance again so that's a nice and if you're feeling really mobilized and angry and, uh, and you want to write or fight or f um, run or fight it's yes, about looking yes. at breathing so then focusing on your out breath so like quick in breath long out breath and that activates your vagal break so that's you immobilizing so when you're overly mobilized immobilize safely so that there's a tool in in this in in this spectrum of things that can be done, people can connect with you and learn and be educated to learn more. So they're they're better equipped to have a more balanced 
and a more set way of uh, of living because they've they've rebalanced, reframed their nervous system. Yeah, it's their own way. It's their authentic expression. Yes, yes. Yeah. It, it, they're not they're not they're not looking at uh, one hit recipe that works yeah. across the board because none of us are made that way exactly if that's the case then we'd all speak the same and have the same skin color and the yeah. same n nose and shoe size but we don't for a reason yeah. because we're all beautiful in our own way mm. but there are those who deliberately want to find others to deregulate mm. because it, it that's how they regulate mm. their nervous system that may not yeah. work for us because yeah. we create these circles of relationships friends family acquaintances mm. that work for us with certain standards that they got to live by mm. i'm just trying to sum up a little bit of yeah. what we talked about well, so far. just to, just to quickly just reframe what you said it's they're not doing it to regulate their nervous system because that's impossible because actually uh, a regulated nervous system is when our social engagement systems online and then we're prone to pro-social behaviors but okay they... you're gonna hate me you gotta yeah. say that again that was so good <laughs> that was the, the See, you can spew it out, but you say it so beautifully that it's like, I'm a guy. We don't, we, you, words don't come to us that fast. Slow <laughs> down. <laughs> that was so good. Say it again, though. That was so cool. So when we're in a regulated state, that's yeah. when our social engagement system is online and we are okay. prone to pro-social behaviors. Okay. So that's how we're designed. We're actually prone to pro-social behaviors. When we're mobilized, it's we're, we're prone to a play state. When there's a perceived threat added to the mix and a danger cue, we flip into aggression. So, so we're not naturally prone to want to regulate by hurting somebody else. That's we're not prone, somebody, prone toward aggression. We're not prone yeah, toward aggression. We're not prone towards aggression. We're, we, our bodies flip to aggression, flip to aggression when there's an environmental influence that's being perceived as a threat that puts our body into a self-protective state. Which it doesn't stay locked into that. It's, it's, we would have to choose to allow it to stay locked into that. Yeah. Unless we don't have the necessary educational or the tools or the education to know yeah. how to unlock it yeah. and, and stay in the state in which we need to live in or were created to live in, which is a peaceful, regulated mm -hmm. state of being at peace technically get it connecting exactly. with everybody else we exactly. weren't meant to go around being banging heads with each other and yeah, beating yeah. each other with beating each other with our fists we yeah. were we were meant to look for the good in other people yeah. and therefore our nervous system goes like okay i like this this is pretty good because this is yeah. what i'm supposed to be doing i just the only i see the good in lauren and lauren sees the good in me the imperfection that we see is temporary because people can make a judgment call on themselves to mm. choose to be different mm. but also if you look at that if you if we go from that standpoint if we are naturally prone to play and 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 connectedness when there's a danger cue introduced when there's a threat okay. our right, body right, flips right. into that aggressive state okay then the more danger cues there are the more it stays locked in that aggressive state so that's where that, that's yeah you did it again <laughs> Well, now you're talking about what people are going through when they are in these relationships. Exactly. And which this man or woman, yeah. you know, it happens to more yeah. women because there's more of them on the earth than men. But whether it's a man or a woman, child, sibling, whatever, they could be in a situation mm. seemingly like a cage in mm. which they are constantly bombarded with a perceived or technically mm. a real threat. Mm -mm -mm. And then they stay locked. They in that stay mindset. locked into that. Yeah. We're yeah. talking no sleep, yeah. overeating or undereating. Exactly. Exactly. We're talking over drinking or yeah. not drinking any water. We, we can go on. We're talking yeah. exercising to your two pounds in size negative one, or you don't want to exercise because you're comfort eating and Netflix binging. This is crazy. Where have you been? <laughs> Where have you been, Lauren? <laughs> We need to take you on a circuit. I used to work for Bank of America, and I would hire people like you to talk to the staff. I could have used you a long time ago in the corporate world. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And our neural system, yeah. our nervous system, 
is getting blasted. It getting nuked mm -hmm. if we're not careful, and sometimes we participate. Yeah, but that's why we're also anxious because this, like society, especially now in the pandemic, we haven't had access to one another. The news, we're isolated. the news. Well, just yeah. the news alone. No, based upon what you said. The news is like that being in a cage with somebody. If we keep watching it all the time, yeah, we're beating ourselves up. Is. Exactly. <laughs> we like, it. It's like, you know what? It's like, yeah. well, you got, we got to treat it like a person. You know, yeah, okay, exactly. I can, uh, okay, but Uncle Harold, Uncle Harold at the really reunion, like, I can only yeah. take 10 minutes with him, okay? You got to call me or, to, you know, call me on my phone so I got to go. I can take 10 minutes with Uncle Harold because if I stay there too long, you go into ninja mode. Yes, you can. Yeah. yeah, totally. So it, yeah. It's like yeah. you're ready to fight. Exactly. And the more danger cues, the more the ninja gears up. And that's, that's the more why. the abuse, the more the exactly. and the ninja the ninja just gonna keep our personal protective person that you exactly. came up with is yeah. called a ninja. Yeah. So that ninja is it all of a sudden it keeps going like well if you're gonna stay here <laughs> Yeah, exactly. exactly. If you're gonna stay here with this crazy person, <laughs> then it's oh it's like yeah. come on, come on, it's like Okay, well, it's time to go to bed. No, no, you go to bed. Yeah, I'm exactly. keeping my eyes open. Exactly. And we're going exactly. like, no, we really, no, we really need to sleep. We haven't slept yeah. in three days because of the yeah. crazy person. No, I don't. Yeah. And the ninja's like, no, you, I don't sleep. You guys, exactly. do you understand how this works? Exactly. I do not go to sleep. Yeah. If there is a noise outside the door, I am awake. I am yeah. on it. Absolutely. And now that person stays in that mode. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That well, we can. Do. And then often what happens? It's like a car engine. If you rev it and rev it and rev it and rev it, which is essentially what you're doing in full on ninja mode, the engine cuts out. So that's why you can be in ninja mode for a long time and then then hit rock bottom and have that high post snowman where you just freeze because your body's exhausted. It's exhausted. It, it, yes, that's absolutely. It's, it wait. It use. It, listen, the engine, it, lady, ladies, gents, guys, <laughs> all the mechanics. Please write in and correct me. But if you do that and you keep your foot on and you, get it, the engine is going to cut out. It'll use up all its oil, its water, mm -hmm. the things that keep it lubricated and functioning properly. Our nervous system is going to break. You're awesome, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to watch this show because they're going to get sick of me. This is the first time people are going to actually write me and go like, okay, Paxton, you promised you would never be the center of attention on the show. I'm sorry, you guys. This is mind-blowing to me. We were put on this planet to get along. Mm. Everybody can overall agree with that. Mm. Mm. How we do that is not le left up by chance. Our nervous system regulates when we are in the wrong circles mm. of productivity. Exactly. We could be in a circle of negativity. Yeah. We could make a choice. Don't be in that circle or we could yeah. decide to go full ninja mode and change everybody in the circle. Yeah. That's stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that everybody. I'm sorry. I'm talking like I'm talking at home. That's wrong. That's wrong. I take that. I take it back on social media. Nobody's stupid. Everybody's intelligent. But that's stupid. Okay. <laughs> do not try to change everybody that doesn't want to change. Yeah, it makes more true. sense to do what you're talking about. I am so sorry. This is this is the only show I did this much talking ever and totally wiped out my guest. And I'm not going to stop because she started this. Oh, really? You started it. You started it, Lord. <laughs> All right, now look. I must. I started having this little segment as we. I mean, session of talking because I was leading up 10, 15 minutes ago to say to Lauren that we have. To, you have to come back for at least 15, 20 minutes to play a game. That was the objective before we started doing something here. Um, I am going to end this right now. This particular segment. Uh, um, and we're going to uh, I'm going to upload this and uh, Lauren and I are going to come back and coexist together on a plane of peaceful balancing of our nervous system because we are trying to connect with one another on this subject of uh, neural uh, science you you are just like man you're you're awesome you're totally awesome uh, yeah that's just like do you ever turn off your neural science coach hat or do you like walk around and see that the, the checker or the person at the gas station is? Yeah, pretty you, much. Yeah. You do, huh? That's, <laughs> that's got to be. Hypervigilance is just not going <laughs> to go away. So. <laughs> you, you, so you have neuroscience hypervigilance? Is that what you say? Pretty much. You do. All right. It's well, my, okay. It's we're, my monk ninja. It's your monk ninja. <laughs> it's your monk ninja. 
you know something about the two of them that just don't sound like they go together monk and ninja you know <laughs> yeah. all right all right so we'll consider that your your ben and jerry's of science you're, you're just kind of like whenever you apply that everything feels better it's like eating ben and jerry's just once you eat it it's like the world is a better place so talking with you uh, has been a, a great pleasure those two segments we're going to come back and we're going to come back and do a little bit more uh picking of your brain but in a very different way with the game that i have in mind it's not the original game it's something that i came up with that will be based upon what we've talked about in the past two segments so that's as, as much as a gift uh, excuse me as a clue that i could give you as to what we're going to do when you come back we'll do that for a little bit and we're going to talk a little bit more about one particular thing that i want to highlight before you go thank you so much and um we'll see everybody in just a minute okay thank you everybody i appreciate it we'll be right back okay